Pentax Spotmatic. Um, this particular camera here, this exact camera, it's actually what got me into film photography. I picked it up for $15 at a yard sale, which is funny because I have yet to find another decent camera at a yard sale, at least around here in good old Kentucky. But yeah, so I picked this up for 15 bucks with a flash. Obviously it came with a case. Uh, it came with one lens, but it came with the famed 50 millimeter 1.4 Super Takumar. Um, in case people didn't know, this is actually a radioactive lens. And what's interesting is if you if you happen to pick one of these up, they're great, but uh, you're probably gonna wanna hold it up to, let's say a white piece of paper um, and take a look at the clarity. Oftentimes the inside element will actually turn yellow due to the uranium, but the good news is you can cure this by either setting it in sunlight face up and covering the front with um, tin foil or aluminum foil or aluminum foil, whichever you pronunciation you decide to use and uh, it should clear it up I actually did a little bit of combination I did sunlight and then at night I would put it under LED and uh, it cleared up really well so this is the Asahi version of the Pentax I do have the Honeywell which is pretty much the same thing but aesthetically I think the Honeywell logo is ugly so I prefer this bad boy ignore the uh, Honeywell lens cap there um, pretty standard camera. It's all manual. Um, you have a thousand top shutter speed down to one second, obviously bulb, very satisfying shutter. Um, I've had great experience. This is probably the, so this was the first Spotmatic I've had and I've had three, I gave one away to my father and all of them have been excellent. There's even one that I got in pretty rough condition, but after I cleaned it up, uh, everything worked pretty well. Built very solidly. Uh, these Super Takumar lenses are awesome. They're, oh, can't hear it. I don't know if that helps. They're all metal. Every Takumar lens, at least that I've encountered, has been all metal. And um, we'll go through some of the lenses I have here in a moment. Something you'll find interesting about this camera is it does not have a hot shoe. Much like some of the older cameras of the time, it has what they call a cold shoe. What's hot and what's cold? Hot means electricity, cold means none. So you would essentially slide your flash in here and you would hook it up via cable. Um, what's interesting about these particular, this particular model of camera, Spotmatic, it was the first camera sold with an NI meter. That's right, so the first camera actually on the market, there were some other prototypes from different companies so people don't yell at me, I know, I know. But the first camera on the market with an NI meter, essentially you'd have a needle, it'll go up and down, plus and minus, and if you get it right in the center, you know your, your, uh, your metering is good. And you would activate that by flipping the switch up, which actually activates the um, depth of field preview, or it actually closes the aperture. So you do, uh, yeah, do your metering that way. I'd show you through here, but I'm using my iPhone to record this, and I don't necessarily get the best focus up close. Um, very satisfying shutter. This one's empty, so let me just go ahead and open it up. Uh, it is one of those fabric shutters, but like I said, I've encountered a couple of these and they've all been excellent, fully functional. So I do have the Honeywell one, as I showed you before. Um, I would go ahead and rack it and shoot it, but I've actually got some film in here that came with the camera when I purchased it. Uh, looking forward to taking a look and seeing how those shots come out, who knows. Which, now that I'm at it, anybody hear of this lens before? Anyone have experience? It's a Braun 28mm 2.8. Now, obviously it's Spotmatic, so it's got the M42 twist-on mount there. But uh, yeah, since I'm still shooting the film it came with, I haven't tested this out, but this looks pretty interesting. Speaking of, these M42 lenses are pretty great. They're pretty easy to come by. I did buy a... Uh, 40, M42 to Pentax K-mount adapter, and um, I've actually had some really good luck with it. It's worked really well, but um, my only complaint is it's kind of hard to get off once you put it on. So it's almost like you are just changing your camera completely over to a uh, M42 mount. So I've got a couple lenses for the Takumar, only showing them not to show off, but you know what? People need to know how good these things are, and I want to spread the gospel of Pentax. So, you're gonna get my gospel pitch here. 
35 millimeter 1.3 Super Takumar. I've had some excellent, excellent images shot out of this. As you can tell, it's pretty small lens. Um, don't know how to compare it to something. I probably should have maybe had a dollar bill or something here with me to compare it to, but pretty small lens. Um, it's a lot of fun to shoot. It's a lot of fun to use. What I love is how wide of a, or how long of a focus stroke this has. Um, it may only go as wide as 3.5, but even wide open, I've had, you know, a lot of great shots that come out super clear. Um, these Takumars, they're just built out of great glass and uh, metal. Only thing plastic you'll find is the caps on each side and this little dial here. Everything else is metal. I'm assuming aluminum, maybe steel, maybe some fancy alloy. Who knows? I also have a 135. Um, it's a great lens, don't get me wrong. Great quality. Um, I'm not a big fan of the 135 um, focal length. And I guess the reason for that is if I need something long, I want to go longer. Um, especially if it's not a zoom lens, which unfortunately I don't have any Takumar zoom lenses, but these primes are where it's at. This is what you really want to be shooting. I will say, I think they made a different metal out of the lens hoods because sometimes they're a little hard to screw on. Uh, these are a lot of fun to even just assemble. Looks like a barrel of a weapon when you actually screw this thing into your camera, um, especially with it being M42 mount. It almost feels like you're mounting a sniper. Um, so it's got a pretty decent um, aperture. You can go up to 3.5, which is not too shabby for something from the 60s. Uh, again, the quality I've gotten out of this, it's great. It's just not a focal length I prefer. Anytime I have wanted to shoot long, I actually happen to get one of the 200s. And I've only shot this a handful of times. One of them was at the moon, but even those shots turned out really, really well. I will say though, as much as I, you know, like having this lens, I don't carry it very often because it's kind of massive. Obviously, I have a lens hood on it now, um, and it's not too bad that it can go to you know as wide as four. But let me go ahead and put this on the camera just for sake of showing the size of this sucker. And bearing in mind the Pentax itself is actually pretty small, you'll notice I'm rotating the camera instead of the lens, it's a little bit easier. Um, Pentax itself is not that big of a camera, and when you mount this sucker on it, uh, it just becomes a little unwieldy. And obviously you're not going to be walking around with a 200 millimeter most of the time. You're gonna mount this thing on a tripod, and it's been great. Uh, although I will admit, you know, it seriously does feel like I'm shooting a weapon when I fire this thing. Other than that, I do have one other lens, and this is kind of a mystery lens. Um, came with that Honeywell, and uh, I'll be honest, I don't know much about this. I've looked it up, and I haven't found a lot of information. It's a Tomioka, don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Yashinan, which I believe is, you know, Yashika, good old Yashika folks. And um, it's pretty interesting. It's supposed to be a 60 millimeter, but it's got a macro setting. I'll be honest, I'm not going to sit here and talk about this lens very much because I don't know much about it. I will say it looks like it has a variable um, maximum aperture depending on how tight you get your focusing. I will say I love the color scheme on this thing. It's pretty neat. The throw for focusing is super long. Um, but if anyone actually has any information on this lens, feel free to share because I would love to know some more. I would probably have a ton of shots on this, but I actually don't use my Spotmatic quite as much as I used to, simply because I've become more spoiled and like to have the option, again, the option, of shooting in a little bit more of an automatic approach, you know, aperture priority, things like that. But yeah, so that is the Pentax Spotmatic. And uh, I'll be honest, this is probably one of the reasons that I'm a big Pentax fan, is the whole Spotmatic line. But wait. There's more. Forgot about this camera. So this is not obviously a Pentax. Did I say Pentax? Nope, it says Fujika. It's an ST605N. Used this camera one time. Why am I bringing this up with Pentax Spotmatic? Well, it's the only M42 camera that I have outside of Pentax brand. Really interesting camera. 
Um, you'll notice it only has a maximum uh, shutter speed of 700. Um, not really interested in shooting this camera very often because you kind of hear it. It's got a lot of vibration when you take shots. I don't know if you can hear it. Let me get it close. It just has a, it's really loud. You hear that spring kind of going off and you feel the whole camera kind of vibrate. If I was going to go any, any slower than 250, I probably wouldn't be very confident in the um, quality of my pictures. Really do like, however, the uh, depth of field preview button being right here. It's very um, Nikon of them. This lens is pretty interesting. It's a little slow. Some of the oils have gotten a little, I guess you would say, thick on there, and it's a little slow to open or close. I have used this a couple of times on my Pentax because this particular lens gives what they call a bubble. I don't know how you pronounce it. Bokeh, bokeh, whatever the word is. I don't have enough people that I talk to in real life about cameras to know. Only people on the internet. Hello, internet camera people. But um, it gives a bubble effect. So the outer ring is actually a lot brighter than the inside. And I shot some around Christmas time. And uh, it was really neat. It gave a great effect. I did have to kind of stop down the lens before I took the shot. Just so I wouldn't get some of that blur from this closing really slowly. But um, yeah, if you get the opportunity to score one of these. The camera may not be that great. But these Fujinon 55mm 2.2 lenses are actually a ton of fun to shoot.